So here, the first day from Genesis 1, 1 through 3. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was a formless void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was moving over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God separated the light from the darkness. Evening passed, and morning came the first day. We sing our hymn of invocation, God, whose almighty word. God, whose almighty word, chaos and darkness heard, and took their flight. Hear us, we humbly pray, and where the gospel day sheds not his glorious day, let there be light. Lord, who once came to bring on your redeeming wing, healing and sight, help to the sick in mind, sight to the Oh, now to humankind, let there be light. Tyrant of truth and love, I'm living holy dove. Speed forth your flight, move on the water's face, bearing the lamp of grace. And in earth's darkest place, let there be light. Holy and blessed three, glorious trinity, wisdom one might, boundless as ocean's tide, rolling in fullest bright. Far and wide, let there be light. We read our litany responsively. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits among creatures. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let us pray. Praise and thanksgiving be to you, O faithful Creator. According to your word and promise, you take delight in prospering us. With your good gifts of sun and rain, the earth brings forth its bounty. With your good gifts of health and strength, we too perform the work which you have given us to do. Make us truly grateful for each evidence of your delight and give us grace to show our gratitude through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. I want to invite the children to come forward. You can come sit right up here in the front row. Okay, I need a couple of volunteers. Okay, yep, come right up. Uh, I'm gonna get, yep, come up. Here, I want you to hold this side so everybody can see. Hold this side so everybody can see. Hold it up nice and high. What do you see? United States of America. Is it pretty big? Yeah. What if we could zoom in a little bit? What might you be able to see? All the states. Do you see right there? There's Sioux City. And I see the uh, Missouri River. And if we look a little bit closer, I see your house. My house? Yeah. It's right there. And guess what else? I see a cat and a dog. 
And I see a parrot. Do you see it? Did you know all that stuff is there? Right? What if I brought you the whole world? It's a big globe, and it, I could make it really small, but is everything on that globe? Yeah, and I bounce the globe. Yeah, I've seen people do that. Do you ever think about it from God's point of view? God, when he looks at the world, the world's kind of small, except kind of like we're doing right now, he can see everything. He can see you. Have you ever sung the song, he's got the whole world in his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. Let's try another verse. Thank you guys for helping. Sing with me. He's got the whole world in his hands. 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 He's got you and me and brother in his hands. He's got you and me and sister in his hands. He's got you and me and brother in his hands he's got the whole world in his hands yeah see how i'm putting the whole world in my hands here okay this isn't the real world but god his hands are so big he can put them over the whole thing and he sees everything that's going on today's thanksgiving and we're thanking god for everything that he has made in the whole world okay so let's say a prayer fold your hands with me dear jesus, dear jesus thank you thank you for making the whole world, the whole world. and for saving us and for saving us thank you thank you for everything, for everything. in jesus name in jesus name amen amen okay thanks for coming up The second day, God said, let there be a dome to divide the water and keep it in two separate places. And it was so. God made a dome and it separated the water under it from the water above it. He named the dome sky. Evening passed and morning came the second day. In the Old Testament reading from Isaiah 55. Lo, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, that he may have mercy on them and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I, purp which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. On the third day, and God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered in one place and let dry ground appear, and it was so. And God said, let the land produce vegetation, plants yielding seed, each according to its kind upon the earth. And it was so. And God saw that it was good Evening passed, and morning came the third day. For our psalmody tonight, I will speak uh, the parts there that are not in bold, after which the congregation will respond uh, by singing those parts that are in bold according to the melody of uh, LSB 785. 
Praise is due to you, O God, and to you shall vows be performed. Redeemer, Creator, in grateful devotion our tribute we bring. For those whom you choose, whom you bring to live in your sanctuary, we shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house. We lay it before you, we kneel and adore you. We bless your holy name, glad praises we sing. By awesome deeds you answer us with deliverance, O God of our salvation. You are the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas. We worship you, God of our fathers, we bless you. Through trial and tempest, our guide you have been. You calm the roaring of the seas and the noise of the waves. You calm the uproar of the peoples. The whole world stands in awe of the great things you have done. When perils overtake us, you will not forsake us. And with your help, O oh Lord, our struggles we win. You send the abundant rain on the plowed fields and soak them with water. You soften the soil with showers and cause the young plants to grow. You crown the year with bounty. With voices united, our praises we offer, and gladly our songs of thanksgiving we raise. When deeds of iniquity overwhelm us, you forgive our transgressions. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house. You, Lord, beside us, your strong arm will guide us to you, our great Redeemer, forever be praised. The fourth day, and God said, Let there be lights in the sky to give light upon the earth to be for signs and seasons and days and years. And it was so, and God saw that it was good. Evening passed and morning came, the fourth day. The New Testament reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Someone will ask, how can the dead be raised to life? What kind of body will they have? You fool. When you plant a seed in the ground, it does not sprout to life unless it dies. And what you plant is a bare seed, perhaps a grain of wheat or some other grain, not the full-bodied plant that will later show up. God provides that seed with the body He wishes. He gives each seed its own proper body. And there are heavenly bodies and earthly bodies. The beauty that belongs to heavenly bodies is different from the beauty that belongs to earthly bodies. The sun has its own beauty, the moon another beauty, and the stars a different beauty. And even among stars there are different kinds of beauty. That is how it will be when the dead are raised to life. When the body is buried, it is mortal. When raised, it will be immortal. When buried, it is ugly and weak. When raised, it will be beautiful and strong. For when the trumpet sounds, the dead will be raised, never to die again. For we shall all be changed. Thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The fifth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the heavens. And God saw that it was good. Evening passed, and morning came, the fifth day. We now join our voices and hearts in singing our hymn, Praise to the Lord. <clears throat> Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. O my soul, praise Him, for He is your health and salvation. Let all who hear now 
to his temple draw near, joining in glad adoration. Praise to the Lord, who o'er all things is wondrously reigning, and as on wings of an eagle uplifting, sustaining. Have you not seen all that is needful has been sent by his gracious ordaining? In the honor of the Holy Gospel. Our gospel reading tonight is from the Gospel of Matthew, the sixth chapter. Jesus said, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Now join again in singing our hymn, Praise to the Lord. Praise to the Lord who will prosper your work. Him thankly you. Surely his goodness and mercy shall daily attend you. Ponder anew what the Almighty can do. With his love he befriend you. Praise to the Lord, O oh, let all that is in me adore him. All that has life and breath come now with praises before him. Let the Amen sound from his people again, gladly forever adore him. The sixth day, and God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, and it was so, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make human beings in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over all the earth. So God created human beings in his own image. He made them male and female and blessed them, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Evening passed and morning came, the sixth day. At this point, you may be seated as we ask our youth to come forward as we are going to hear from them as they sing Cornerstone. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest friend, but wholly trust in Jesus'
They've got it down, and she stopped playing. Okay, you can go back to your seats. I want to start with a joke. There was a woman and a man involved in a car accident. It was a bad car accident. So bad that both cars were totally demolished. But amazingly, neither the man nor the woman were hurt. After the accident, they crawled out of their cars, and the woman said, So, you're a man. Interesting. I'm a woman. Wow, look at our cars. There's nothing left. But fortunately, we are unhurt. This must be a sign that God wants us to meet and become friends and live together in peace the rest of our days. The man replied, I agree with you completely. This must be a sign of God. The woman continued, and look at this. There's another miracle. My car is completely demolished, but this bottle of wine didn't break. Surely God wants us to drink this wine and celebrate our good fortune. Then she hands the bottle to the man, and he drinks half of it, and then gives it back to the woman. The woman takes the bottle, immediately pours the cork back in, and hands it back to the man. The man asked, aren't you going to have any? The woman replied, no, I think I'll wait for the police. Okay, I don't see any laughing of the, the kids up here. Okay. Yes, it's a bad joke, I know that. But it illustrates the point I want to make tonight. Namely, that one thing leads to another. At first, you think one thing's going to lead to another, and they're going to be married by the end of this joke. But there's a twist. It didn't happen. And the truth is, with creation, we just heard the creation account, one thing leads to another throughout that creation account. God created the world, and it leads to other things. It was a young Christian man who once pointed out that this account of creation found in Genesis chapter 1 is an account of one thing leading to another. This student's view was the cosmic account of creation, yet it's uniquely profound. He saw God's creation as a race to fix chaos and turn it into the laws of the universe that we still see today. His account went something like this, and I want to read this to you. Day one, the Spirit of God hovers over the waters, inspecting the state of chaos. God begins creating, simultaneously opening Pandora's box with the immortal words, let there be light. Light and darkness are separated, categorized, with the two names, light and darkness, or as we call them, day and night. If for no other reason than simply to highlight just how good light is by contrast and comparison. Good enough. Evening and morning, day one. But yet, day two came. 
Problem. Light. Light's a great idea, and the day and night light and darkness organization is innovative packaging concept. But the simple fact is the matter is that light illuminates chaos, and it shows the chaos for what it really is, a terrible, watery mess. God begins to sort out the slop, separating the waters into two types. There's the waters up, which we call sky, and the waters down, which we call it actually doesn't say in the Bible, so it's not called anything. Good enough. Evening, morning, day two. Day three, problem. Now you've got the separation of the waters above and the waters below. Great idea and truly serves its purpose to make chaos less chaotic. But it's a bit monotonous. Regardless of whether it is up or down, it's all still water. In addition, the sky is blue, except at night, it's black. And then there's the sea, which is blue, but it's black at night. God creates dry ground, called it land, to break up the monotony. Good enough? No. By afternoon, another problem reeled its ugly head. The sloshing, swirling waters were eroding the newly created land vegetation, the roots of which hold the land together, and the colors of which give light something really interesting to play off. Good enough. Evening and morning, day three. Day four, problem. Great idea to have vegetation would work well with that great idea of land if it could be kept alive. But something's missing and the plants aren't looking too hot. God rolls up the light into a sun and a moon and stars, thus simultaneously creating days and nights, seasons, tides, and moonlighting. Good enough. Evening and morning, day four. Day five, problem! The great ideas of sun and seasons are working well, too well. Now the plants are growing out of control and they're rapidly depleting their supply of carbon dioxide, which they need to survive. God creates fish and birds, both to consume the plants, keeping them in check, and provide carbon dioxide through respiration. Good enough. Evening and morning, day five. Problem! Day six, while the fish are doing just fine munching on all the algae and seaweed, the birds are a bother. They refuse to eat the plants, and now they themselves are starving. So God creates worms and insects, grubs, such as to, the, the birds are going to enjoy. God also creates other animals, some that actually will eat the plants. And God creates human beings with the problem-solving capabilities to order and organize, care for and create, live and love, good enough, evening and morning, the sixth day. What does this view of creation teach us, tell us? Simply enough, one thing leads to another. Light leads to a mess, which leads to organization, leads to blah blue, leads to land, leads to erosion, leads to plants, leads to dead plants, leads to sun and seasons, leads to growth, leads to overgrowth, leads to fish and fowl, leads to starving fowl, leads to beast and bugs, leads to human co-creators. And what does this view teach us about God? God is not, is it that God is a manic bumbler? trying to desperately control creation, which is out of going haywire? Absolutely not. Dig down beneath the irony of it all and you'll find that God is a lavish giver, intricately weaving the goodness of creation into a broad and complex tapestry, fitting the pieces of the universe together with precise care, all custom molded and form fitted to conform to God's grand scheme of providing life and love. One thing leads to another, right? But we know that even with God's perfect creation, Adam and Eve were now there, and they took this perfect gift, and you expect them to respond with thanksgiving, but what did they do? Just like in my story, they don't 
do what's perfect. They eat of the forbidden fruit, and then one thing leads to another, and there's suffering and death and problems and troubles and all that's going on even still to right now. It's this twist, this fall, that makes today, which normally would be just exuberant thanksgiving, but yet the romantic moment has turned into a downer. So Jesus, later, he said it this way, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. With God, everything leads to good, but with the creation, with us humans, after the fall, everything seems to lead the other way. God is always lavishly giving good, but even he wants to give us all things, but we the other way. Genesis 1, let me repeat, God's grand scheme is providing life and love. So tonight we're here in this grand celebration of thanksgiving. And the message is supreme. During this harvest festival, plenty, both of our, you ever think about it? Both our church and our nation have found it proper to remind us of the cause and effect relationship that exists between ourselves and the true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God's lavish wanting to give us good things leads to another. What does it lead to? It leads to us saying thank you. And God's giving and loving didn't stop in Genesis. It keeps going. Even after we fell into sin, our forefathers, Adam and Eve, God already was coming up with a plan of salvation. He said there would be a descendant who would come that would be a blessing to the whole universe. He said that to Abraham and then repeated it to Isaac and Jacob. And then it is unpacked even more with King David and Solomon and the kings that went on. And then the prophets like Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. And then finally, in a little manger, which we're going to celebrate next month, that descendant was born in Bethlehem. God's love came to earth. One thing leads to another, and it's always good because he would live the perfect life. He would take our sins on himself. He would give us new life, eternal life, because what he did on the cross. One thing leads to another so that we would say thank you. This is the good news that we share during Thanksgiving that even as we are part of God's creation, molded by his design and shaped with God's own hands, we are called to join the hymn of creation. One thing leads to another. The forests, they cry out, one thing leads to another. The oceans roar, one thing leads to another. The Starry heavens echo, one thing's lead to another. The birds chirp, the stallions whinny, the dogs bark, the whales sing. God's love leads to our thanks. Amen. Thanks be to God. Amen. Eight hundred and ninety five, and you'll note that we're going to stand on the third verse. <laughs> Blessed us on our way with calm. 
countless gifts of love and still is ours today. Oh, may this bounteous God through all our life be near us with ever joyful parts and blessed peace to cheer us and keep us in his grace and guide us when perplexed and free us from all harm in this world and the next. All praise and thanks to God, the Father now be given. The Son in Him who reigns with them in highest heaven. The one eternal God, whom earth and heaven adore, for thus it was, is now, and shall be evermore. The seventh day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. On the seventh day, God finished his work which he had done, and God rested. We now take time to consider our gifts and offering to the Lord, of course, the fruits, the first fruits, excuse me, of all that God has so richly given to us. Our grateful response to God's grace and mercy to us uh, can be given in the back of church this evening. We now continue with our prayer. For each of the prayer petitions, we will end uh, with the response that is listed on the screen uh, above you. We pray. For all your gifts of creation, we give thanks to O gracious God. O God, from whom comes down every perfect gift and every good endowment, let all creation join to praise your goodness. On the first day, you brought light, seen today in fire and photons, lasers and light shows, color and campfire, energy, and everything that springs from your brightness. For all your gifts of creation, we give you thanks, O gracious God. On the second day, you graced creation with waters below and above, with the beautiful blue of the sea and the sky. To this day, you continue to grace the world with rain that refreshes and snow that sends shivers, with the atmosphere and the blessings that come down through it. For all your gifts of creation, we give you thanks, O gracious God. The gifts you granted us in the third day are land, dry and wet, desert and bogs, canyons and cactus, valleys and vines, fruits for our eating and nuts we can shell, awesome oceans and plains of grain, the earth and all its bounty. For all your gifts of creation, we give you thanks, O gracious God. The fourth day you brought forth the heavenly lights, the beacon of the sun, the lantern of the moon, the mystery of the planets and stars. You balance creation with sunny days and cool evenings, seasons, years, tides, and time. For all your gifts of creation, we give you thanks, O gracious God. Day five, you provided things that flap and flutter, squawk and chirp. You made whales and minnows, eagles and eggs, and everything that flies to the heights of your heavens and swims to the depths of your oceans. For all your gifts of creation, we give you thanks, O gracious God. The sixth day reveals your grand glory when you design things that creep and crawl, stalk and strut. We marvel at humans and hugs ourselves and your son who entered this world to make us your own again. For all your gifts of creation, we give you thanks, O gracious God. For the seventh day when you rested, we rejoice in pillows and hammocks, mattresses and meditation, workless weekends and worship, time to recharge and celebrate your creation so that we can praise you evermore. For all your gifts of creation, we give you thanks, O gracious God. Finally, Lord, we lift before you those who are in need of your prayers, especially Clint, Brody, Marla, Devin, Beth, Barry, Miss Rowetter, and all those we name in our hearts now. 
We pray that you provide them healing of mind, body, and soul according to their needs. We lift before you those who are remembering baptismal anniversaries this week. Anthony, David, Kimberly, Angie, Caitlin, Keith, Chloe, Addison, Benjamin, Rain, and all others who remember their baptism. We pray that you would remind them that this week and every week of the gifts they have in baptism, the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. Finally, for those who travel for this Thanksgiving holiday, we pray that you would provide them safe travel to and from their destination, and in their celebration, enable them to remember you as the giver of all good gifts. Let all creation join to praise your goodness and your grace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now continue as we prepare to receive communion, as we confess our sins to God and receive the forgiveness that he has for us in his son, Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow upon us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid upon him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives to reigns and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of Sabaoth adored, heaven and earth with full acclaim. Shout the glory of your name. Sing Hosanna in the highest. Sing Hosanna to the Lord. Truly blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. May this, the peace of the Lord, be with you always. Amen. Amen. Oh, Jesus.
invite you to stand for prayer. And following the post communion colic, we will pray together the Lord's Prayer. We pray. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us in the same through in the same through in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be, be thy, thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. Then you should remain standing as we sing our closing benediction, as we sing the words of the common doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings Father, Son, and Holy Ghost.